Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with part two of our cool Rockola 445 repair video. If you didn't see the first video, go check it out. The link is below, because we're halfway through. So, I mean, what good is it to watch it from the middle, right? So on the first video, we had just repaired the selection system, had the thing, the right end circuit working on the jukebox, and we had the readout circuit working on the jukebox, and we had gotten to the point where the record would lay down on the turntable, but then stop. Ah, so close, but yet so far away. So let's continue in this video where we left off before and see if we can get this thing up and running. Well, we're limping along, but it did select. Let's just see if we can get it to select again. So there's E9. Let's try E9. Or let's, let's do E0 because we already tried an, a 9. So we haven't done an E, so E0 would be the very last one. Yeah, so the right end spun around and clicked something. Now the read out is rolling around looking for it. It's got it. It's laid it down, but then it stops. So it's not um, it's not going all the way through. Like it, it should have went farther. Like it, if you turn the knob, it'll it'll um, go through the rest of its segment. But it should have. It, it's it may be hitting one of these switches too early or something. But I think we got the right end at least partially working. And then you see the readout is working. And then it tries to lay it down, but we have a problem once it gets the, the record down on the thing. It, it hasn't actually completely let go of it yet. And the, um, the turntable stopping and everything's kind of hanging up. So I kind of need to figure out. I'm going to keep looking through that theory of operation and seeing how far we can get. But I think we might have fixed our right end problem by spraying contact cleaner all over the um, selection keys. All right, so we're back in school. So let's read through this and see if we can figure out how far we're getting. So it says, sequence number 13, selection registered. The first selection phase is now complete. The second phase begins with our moving of the selector lever and turns our attention to the other side of the selector, right? The same pulse that moved the selector lever one into the play position, so when it, the right end kicks up the little leg, also energized the wobble plate solenoid, which is up here on the side of the thing. And so I've seen it, and that does happen. Every time you flip one of those, it moves that little solenoid. Also energized the wobble plate solenoid. This pulls the wobble plate arm against the wobble plate switch. Play control relay three energizes. So there is a play control relay inside the power distribution block. I did see that inside of there, but I haven't taken it apart and cleaned it or anything. Sometimes the relays get dirty inside. And so they're telling you this is how it happens. Blah, 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 blah. The play control relay now starts the action to bring the specific record to the turntable. Amplifier and turntable motor is turned on. The circuit is not shown. Contact four closes circuits to the mute relay 5 and magazine motor 6 via the number 1 micro switch. Contact 4. What is it on? So I don't know what contact 4 is on. Oh, it's on the play control relay. Okay. Contact 4 closes circuits to the it closes circuits to the mute relay and magazine motor via the number one micro switch. So the magazine motor is turning, so that contact four must be working. Magazine and readout carriage begin to rotate. Yes, we've gotten that far. Causing homing wiper seven, which is this outside one here, to parallel a circuit to the play control relay. All right, so basically, in other words, it's keeping the play control relay on. Physically, the selected record must be placed on the turntable with the assurance that the correct side will come up. The readout carriage and wipers rotate in sync with the magazine until the physical and electrical conditions are arranged. So the readout carriage and wipers rotate in sync with the magazine until the physical... See, so yeah, that's happening. So basically the basket's moving and the readout thing is moving. For every 360 degree rotation of the magazine, the alternating dog cams, the alternating dog cams to change the lever position. 
The up and down movement operates the gripper reversal bracket, bracket as well as the AB snap switches. Okay, all that's working. The switch action connects A top or B bottom record selection circuits to the readout carriage contacts and hammer coils via the printed circuit board, via the printed circuit board and carriage wipers. All right, I think all that's working. When the mechanism has completed conditions for the physical transfer of the correct selection to the turntable, the striking of the selector lever by the readout carriage contact, 9, completes the circuit to the interlock trip coil, 10. Okay, so that's inside the control box. I have not messed with those. Contacts 11 and 12 transfer. Contact 11 provides a holding circuit for positive locking of the trip coil. Hmm, so we're starting to get the things that could be the, the, the issue. As the trip coil armature completes its stroke, uh, it's this one, release coil armature relaxes, transferring contacts 13 dynamically breaking the rotation of the record magazine and starting the gripper motor. Okay, yeah, so that much is happening. So this this part, at least this one's working, but this one may, if they said something about this being a hold, that might have something to do with it. This operates the gripper arm whose jaws grasp the record. So we're getting that far. During the placing of the record on the turntable, the rotating gripper camshaft operates three micro switches. Microswitch 1 provides a safety feature, preventing the operation of both the gripper and the magazine motors at the same time. Microswitch 2 operates next, causing two actions to occur at the same time. First, the gripper motor circuit now is routed through a 15 ohm, 15 ohm resistor, reducing the speed of the motor. This causes the tone arm to advance smoothly towards the turntable. Hmm, that's interesting. You could get rid of that resistor and that thing of like <laughs> be really fast. Let's not do that though. There's probably a reason. It'll be less smooth towards the turntable. All right, so it's doing that. During the placing of the record on the turntable, the rotating gripper camshaft operates four micro switches. Why did it say three up here? During the placing of the record on the turntable, the rotating gripper camshaft operates three micro switches. During the placing of the record on the turntable, the rotating gripper camshaft operates four micro switches. During the placing of the record on the turntable, and this says, during the placing of the record on the turntable, the rotating gripper camshaft, and this says, the rotating gripper camshaft operates four micro switches. So why does one say three and one says four? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, micro switch number one operates first. Circuit to the magazine motor is disconnected to assure that both DC motors do not run at the same time in addition to turning off power to transistor Q1. Transistor Q1 no longer conducting causes one letter lamp to remain lit a designated number lamp via the AB snap switch and resistor R1. Might have to look into that. When number three micro switch operates, the interlock release coil, and so inside, 16 energizes. A dynamic brake is applied on the gripper motor. Hammer on the readout carriage is released. So this goes back. No, hammer on the readout carriage is released. Okay, that's on the actual carriage. At this point, the tone arm is fed mechanically into the record. Amplifier mute relay relaxes and the music cycle starts. So we might have some problems with these going on. Or we might have some problems with the number three micro switch. As record play is ended, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we, don't, we haven't got to that part. Um... Okay, so I'm gonna those those micro switches on the back of the thing where we were putting that cam back on. I'm gonna take the the uh, ends off of those, and I'm gonna check them with a multimeter and see if those switches are opening and closing like they should, because uh, that could have done that could do the whole thing if that's a bad connection. 
So I cleaned all those cam switches on the back and they were pretty dirty. I think that may have been it, but I haven't tested it yet. I also, I went inside and I cleaned all the switches that I could find in the um, credit unit and the um, power distribution unit. It's This is a 445. Those schematics that I'm looking at are from a 443, so I think it's a little bit different, but it's I think the gist is the same. It didn't, it didn't quite have that double coil setup uh, that it was showing us. But this is the play relay. It's from inside, and it's in it's really clean and everything. But I'm going to uh, test it, so I figured I'd show you how you can test them. So it has this little case on it. You pop it off, and there's three of these relays in the machine, and all three of them are identical. That's them there, 1310 series. And so the way these these relays work are, they got all these little. It goes in a socket, and it's got all these little connections on it and these these two on the bottom here on the outside are the power that energizes the relay so if if power goes to those two it makes this relay energize and if you look really close at the top see how those see the contacts the top two rows of pins see how they're connected I mean they're, they're not connected but you see how the the, uh, the armature here is touching the top one so you see on the top there are four uh, contacts, right? And then back here they have a wire soldered to them. And the wire connects down to these contacts. So right now this bottom contact here, the second one up, is connected to the top because that armature is touching the top one. If the relay pulls in, it pulls all the armatures down and now they're touching the bottom. So now the third row is touching the second row and there's four of them on this relay. You can see how clean it was just in the in the game. This thing's 50 years old. So the way you can the way you can check if it's any good is you can right right now it's the top row should be touching the third row. I don't know if I can do this with one hand but Hey, we'll try. If I was any good with chopsticks, I could. So you see what I'm touching. The third row and the top row. And it's connected. And you want to do that for all four of them. And so, if you push it in, the second row and the third row should now be connected. So if you get it where it's not doing that, where it doesn't go down near zero, then uh, it's the contacts are probably dirty, so you can clean it with some like really fine sandpaper or whatever you usually clean switches and stuff with. So I'm going to check that and see if they're all right, and if they're not, I'm going to clean it and then I'm going to put the play relay back in, and then we'll see if we can uh, test it out some more. All right, much time has passed, so I was tracking down the wire. So basically, we got it to where when it's in the operate position, sometimes it would just stop. And so, remember, I was just saying uh, that uh, th there was a relay that was a little different. I guess this version's different, blah, blah, blah. No, I was just looking in the wrong spot. This piece here hangs underneath the mech in the front, right underneath the turntable. And inside it is a bunch of contacts and relays and stuff. And that has, all has to do with um, the motors running. That's what you know, distributes power this way and that way. So I'm going to clean all these relays and then pop this thing back in and hopefully that'll get us uh, where it doesn't stop uh, while it's moving and when it lays the, the arm down it just stops there instead of com continuing to go. So uh, hopefully this will get us somewhere. Well that still didn't get it folks. I'll show you where we're at. If you put it on scan, it will scan no problem. If you put it on operate, it stutters and stuff, right? Now remember when it lays it down and it's trying to play, it's on operate too. So it was laying it down, but then it was stopping. So that's the same thing that's going on here. It's like it's in, it's, it's in a bad spot where it can't get power because of where it is. Because when you get to certain spots, it moves fine. It should spin all the way around to the home position and stop. Usually whenever you put it back in operate, it'll go to right here and stop. It just 
stays there until the well it's in operate position. So if you're right here and you put it in operate, it should go all the way around and stop at that spot. You can see it'll go a little bit and then hang up. But I did throw a record in there, so I figured we'd see if it'll what it does, hopefully it won't destroy our record. It's in A6. So right in, just wrote in A6 apparently. Oh, the lights are working on the front too. A6 is lit up. It's laying it down. Bam, and then it stopped. Did you see that it hit the hammer right when it stopped? So that may be a clue. Right after it hits that hammer, whatever happens after that is a problem. <laughs> so um, if you hit scan, it'll kind of go keep going through its motion, what it was supposed to do. But you probably won't get sound because it's not in the operate position. I mean, it's playing, but it's not amplified. So whatever it is that's making it stop, uh, we're at that, wherever that is. So I'll, uh, I will uh, keep digging through the schematics so we can figure out how it works. Okay, I may have figured it out in theory. So we're at the part where it's rotating the magazine. Play control relay now starts the action to bring the specific record to the turntable. Amplifier in the turntable motor is turned on. Contact 4 closes the circuits to the mute relay 5 and magazine motor 6 via the number 1 micro switch. Okay. Magazine and read out carriage begin to rotate. Right, so we're getting that far. Causing homing wiper 7 to parallel a circuit to the play control relay. Right. So on the outside readout thing, there is one wiper that they call the homing wiper. Right. And so to parallel a circuit to the play control relay. So the, the uh, play control relay is what turns on the amplifier and the turntable mo motor. Right? And is making stuff happen. Okay? So remember, as soon as that hammer hits, bam! It's turning off. Right? So what do they mean by that? So if you look on the schematics, here is the magazine motor that we're trying to get to play. So look how it gets power to this side. And it comes over here and it goes through this wobble plate switch. Well when that hammer hits that damn lever, it makes the wobble plate release so the switch goes back the other way. So when the hammer hits the level, this connection is broke and then it turns off. Well, why does it turn off? It's because this connection is probably bad. If this connection was still connected on the homing wiper, if this turns off, this would still be connected and it'd still, work, it'd still run. And then if you look too, see how this says operate off scan? So when we're in operate, that's when we have the trouble. If we turn it over to scan, it works fine. So why does that work? It's because the power goes from here through this scan connection to here and connects down to here. So it bypasses all this stuff. <laughs> so I think the problem is probably this homing wiper, which I've already cleaned, but I must have not got right. It must not be making good connection or something. So I'm going to clean that some more and we'll see if that gets it where it goes all the way through the cycle. Okay, so check this out. We're in operate. Here are the homing fingers. See, they, they rub that thing as they go around. This outside one is the, the one. If you press it, it goes... So it's... The track's dirty, or, or uh, that contact's dirty, or it's not... It even looks like it's bent a little bit. So something's going on with that. So I'm going to mess with that until I get it right.
Okay, so yeah, that pin was a little bit bent, so I put more tension on it so it's holding down better on the thing and cleaned it and all that. And so the way these are supposed to work is, so we're in operate right now and we're in the home position, which is where there's a record missing. And so remember it was working on scan, which is how it's supposed to work. But the way they work is whenever you go back to operate, it should spin all the way back around to the home position. Oh hell, oh hell. I think I've got that record in A6. Let's see if it'll pick it up and set her down. A6. So it did the right end things. We were still where we were. And I did the readout thing. Laid the record down, kind of. Put the needle on the record. All right, it's playing, it's just not amplified. We're getting nothing out of the speakers. Hear it? So it's trying. So, uh, it's, it's still hanging up a little bit and stuff, but, uh, like it didn't grab the record quite right, but all that, I think some of that will work its way out and some of it we can adjust out. But we need to get the uh, the amp working. Um, so that's our, that's our next thing. We'll see if we can figure anything out with that. I had the damn volume turned down. Listen to that bacon. All right, you see how it didn't pick up the record? So it's still got some issues, which is what we'll cover in the second video, people. But in this first video, we went from it ain't doing a damn thing to it's actually kind of playing a record. So that's pretty good. So we'll do another video of the rest of it. We'll keep working on it. So we got to, um, you know, fix some of the little stuff like that. You know, like how it will never hang up any of the records. We've got to uh, rebuild the amplifier. We've got to put it all back together. Um, we've got to do the, the um, fill it up with records and put the record titles and all that in it. So we'll do that in the next video. But uh, it looks like we're about halfway there, so that's good. I think it's pretty reliably doing it, too. So um, yeah, that's about the fourth time I've had it pick that same record up. I'll have to try all of the other selections, though. But let us know what you think. Leave your comments below and give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film all this. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.